Hello friends, come join me tonight as we discuss the nutrient solution you should be using in your germination station. Also tonight, we're going to be implementing a tip from Barefoot Farms out of Manitoba. Thanks, Dale. We're going to show on your video the tip that you have for our members. The tip that Dale gave us is simple. I've been asked multiple times now about the fertilizer I use in the seedling stage, so I figured I'd take this opportunity to show everyone. As always, we recommend you wear your safety equipment, as such as a mask, gloves, glasses. I've already done so and brought the fertilizers over. Because the main tank in my seedling station is that much smaller than the one in the main system, we're going to be mixing up a 15 liter batch of fertilizer. Now, these fertilizers may vary from province to province and depending on what type of fertilizer you use and the water that you're using and the quality of the water that's coming into your system. For the best results in any hydroponic system, I suggest you use a reverse osmosis system. The first step I like to do is I fill up a 15 liter bucket of fresh water. I have an empty 15 liter bucket that I'll take half of the water out of that one and put into this one. That is because the two fertilizers we use have to be mixed separately. Our main fertilizer, the 61131 from Plant Product, we're going to use 18 grams per 15 liters of water. The additional calcium nitrate that we're going to get, we're going to use 13 grams per 15 liters of water. Once you have your fertilizers weighed and scaled that you've got the adequate amounts, it's time to put the water in the buckets and mix in the fertilizers separately. We're going to take that 15 liters of water, we're going to split it into buckets. Doesn't need to be exact, just needs to be half and half. Next step, take the gloves off, put your mask on. I'd also like to mention the fact that we warm the water up to about 20 degrees before we put it into the seedling station. In this way, the plants really uptake that fertilizer. It's nice and warm for the roots and encourages vigorous plant growth. Now that we're sure our fertilizers are dissolved in the water, we're going to add them together. mixed up let's take a second to check our EC and see if we're gonna have vigorous plant growth if we follow the rate of application on the plant product bag with the directions and on how to use the product we'll actually find in the rate of application that you should be aiming for a 2500 to 3500 EC as you can see I've already stuck a pH meter inside the water to see what pH range we're at I usually like to aim for six Right now we're at a 6.08. That's very good for not having to add pH up or pH down. My water is bang on where I want it. Now let's check out my EC. If we follow directions on the plant products bag, we know that we should be aiming for 2,500 to 3,500 micromoles. Now, in the seedling stage, plants will only absorb so much fertilizer. So I actually like to keep it a little bit below 2,500 micromoles. Let's see what we got. Right where I want it, folks. 2,100 micromoles. We got it where we want it. We're going to take that fertilizer. We're going to put it into our system. Notice I'm still wearing the gloves. You don't want to get this stuff on your hands, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's fairly straightforward from here. 
I removed the cap off of right here. This is where I like to add the fertilizer because the location of the main tank is a little bit hard to get out. So I only really need to take it out for cleaning and stuff. So we add the fertilizer down through here. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how rugged your seedling station is. This is the most important point of your seedling stage. The condition it comes out of here and the start that it gets will affect the harvest that you're going to get at the end of the line. So having this ratio down pat is crucial. Having air to circulate and stimulate these plants is crucial. All these little things are going to make a difference in your growing day to day. Some of you may have noticed from my last video on the germination station, G2 we call it, it was in the back of the greenhouse. Well. That's an error on my part. I actually have moved it up right next to my wood furnace where it's getting the most heat and adequate circulation from that furnace. As from as Dale's tip. And what it does is cut down on a lot of algae buildup. In these troughs, whether you make your own or you buy them from online, there's always a little bit of water that builds up, okay? And that water plus sunlight and fertilizer is going to create algae. So Dale's simple tip is to take the black trays and cut them so that they fit down around the bottom here and they block that out that light from getting at the water which builds algae. So we're going to go ahead and do that and show you guys the idea. Look. Now it works better if you have the trays, the germination trays from American Hydro. These black trays, you can actually just cut one end of it off and cut the corners and it'll slide right on over. But because I've got custom made uh, germination trays, this is what I had to do and I had to tape it on there. But you guys get the idea that little bit of buildup now is not gonna get, the light is not gonna be able to touch it and it's gonna reduce algae. Perfect. I hope this video helped you a little bit with your fertilizer ratio and the ratio we use getting started up and I hope it helps you get yours started up. Any comments or questions, let me know.